Gujarat's past, where all was not hunky-dory, where there were challenges like water scarcity. I'm told by one of my friends that the Viramgam Express, when used to be coming towards uh, Saurashtra, used to latch on tanker wagons and supply water to various stations en route. The Kutch district was absolutely scarce of agricultural production, so parched was its earth. Industrial activity was not possible to, that, to the extent that it is possible today because of various challenges, water being one of them. Respected uh, Chief Guest, Guest of Honor, fellow speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Friends, what we see in Gujarat today is an evolution of sorts, an evolution which is akin to a revolution. There was a recent study regarding ease of doing business, a scorecard of various states in India. And no surprises here, top of the chart was Gujarat with 71.4% of the score. And of course, and very, very uh, surprisingly and uh, pleasantly, Andhra Pradesh falling close, in hand, close at hand. Today, the World Bank has recognized Gujarat as the most investor-friendly state. That is a big, big recognition for the state of Gujarat. And automatically, there are results. I'm told, and I've read, that after the Prime Minister's Chinese visit, almost $22 billion have been committed for Gujarat. And this is going to be diverted towards industrial area uh, incre increment as well as energy development increment. In the automobile sector, in 2015 itself, there have been two major initiatives, one by Ford, another by Suzuki. Friends, when we are talking about ease of doing business, ease of doing business in Gujarat and, of course, the automobile sector, can anybody deny the nano episode? For years together, it was languishing in an eastern state. And the promptness with which Gujarat responded is something phenomenal. Friends, it's not merely automobile alone. In every sphere of industrial activity, Gujarat dominates and in some cases monopolizes. Not for nothing is uh, Gujarat called the chemical hub of India. 62% of the uh, overall uh, petrochemical production, 53% of the other chemicals, a largest supplier of biofertilizers in India. And in the field of pharma production, 40% is accounted by Gujarat, and another 40% for pharma missionary production. To this August audience, what can I say about port development? There have been experts, the Rathis and Maharathis, who can speak volumes of port development in Gujarat. It has been phenomenal. Today, throughout the day, you'll hear a lot about the 1,600 kilometers of coastline. But the history of port in Gujarat is something which all of us should really recall. I have read particularly while preparing the speech, about a port called Lakpat, centuries back, when the Indus River used to flow through this town. There was sea cargo related activity at that time itself, when there used to be carriage of cargo from Lakpat to the Sindh province. And today what you have, what do you, I mean, you look at the port scene in India, I mean, Gujarat. It is a growth engine of the state and, a biggest, and the biggest credit in this connection should go to Gujarat Maritime Board. Reams of paper has been written about Gujarat Maritime Board and a lot of talk is going to happen today about the Gujarat Maritime Board. And why not? It is not merely talk. The very statistics that, that we are looking at day in and day out 
32% of the India maritime traffic into inverted commerce, India maritime traffic is carried by the non-major ports of Gujarat, and Gujarat Maritime is an architect of that. Friends, you can say that an individual is naturally endowed. Similarly, a state can be naturally endowed, like Gujarat being proximal to international sea routes. People have just said Africa, Middle East, Europe. We can also talk about the proximity of uh, Gujarat to the hinterland, a rich hinterland, North hinterland, Central India hinterland, and a lovely rail connectivity and a road connectivity. But is that enough for development to take place? Development can take place only when there is optimal use of the natural endowment. Well, crude, crude pipelines, so crucial for the Indian economy. Today, you have the crude pipelines linking from Gujarat ports to various refineries in India. Huge investments are taking place in the port development uh, sphere. And you'll find that there will be more and more development in the port sector in Gujarat. Friends, when we talk about development, when we talk about Gujarat, we have to speak about the Gujarati youth, the Gujarati entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship uh, element. About a year back when I was participating in one such seminar, my fellow speaker Samir Bhai mentioned that not for a Gujarat youth, the PhD, not for a Gujarat youth, the, uh, the MPhil and whatnot. The Gujarati youth has business coursing through his veins and that entrepreneurship is very much omnipresent in the development of Gujarat. Friends, let me take you to another train journey. A friend of mine in Gandhidam, a senior gentleman, Murugappan, he mentioned to me that I came here more than 40 dec I mean, four decades back. And at that time, in the Navjeevan Express, which used to go southward, there used to be South Indians going back for a holiday. But along with the South Indians, you used to have the Gujarati youth, the Gujarati businessmen, going to far-flung south, doing business in Coimbatore, doing business in Salem, and whatnot. That's the entrepreneurship spirit of Gujarat, which is omnipresent in today's development in Gujarat. Friends, we can talk about development, business, industrial uh, growth, but what use if there is no industrial peace? Even in that respect, today, Gujarat is miles ahead. In a, in a study, it was found out that the least number of mandates lost in India was in the state of Gujarat. So talking about recipe for ease of doing business, we have everything omnipresent in Gujarat. Industrial peace, land bank, proximity and supreme connectivity to hinterland, proximity to major international sea routes, frequency of liner services, skilled manpower, and port equipped to handle all types of cargo. Can we ask for anything more? Or is it dil mange more? Yes, there can be several areas of development and that's exactly what we are going to talk about in various uh, sessions today. As far as our industry is concerned, since Mukesh Bhai is not going to be speaking today, let me ask for sustainable freight rates so that we can get, give smooth and efficient services to all of you all. And finally, friends, I, was, I have talked about Viramgam Express, I have got talked about Navjeevan Express, but let me end my speech by saying three cheers for Gujarat Express, the numero uno location to do business in India. Thank you.